Okay, let's do a why this matters. Let's do a why this matters. Why does this matter? Well, because, see, these guys were trying to figure out what was inside of an atom. But other people, like John Baird, said, well, wait a second, you just gave me a paintbrush. You gave me a paintbrush. Look at this. That's a paintbrush. Painting with a magnet. It really is, and the screen would light up over here. And so, so he said, well, I can, paint, I can paint pictures. And this really is the first television screen. This was the first TV screen. And, and all they needed to do, there, okay, right? There it is. But look, that's a cathode ring tube. <laughs> Maybe that's one of Thompson's students who, who won a Nobel Prize. And, and you put, but now you put this down and you put these sort of things around it. What are those things? Magnetic fields. That's all it is. It's just magnetic fields. It's Thompson's experiments, right? But now they're using it to zip the beam around faster than your eyes can keep up with so that it looks like a picture. Now, electron painting had never been done before because we didn't know that we had these electrons. But as soon as we knew, boy, did that launch a completely new era of screens, right? The era of screens. We, we don't use cathode ray tubes. This is saying, ask your grandparents. They'll tell you about the cathode ray tube TVs which they all had. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we don't use cathode ray tubes to paint with electrons today in that way, but we still paint with electrons today, right? Your OLED screen is still simply an electron-based painting tool, right? right? Okay, we're just pumping the electrons into the phosphor in a different way, right? And we'll be talking about that uh, as we go through the rest of this week, and we understand how electrons interact with light coming in and out of an atom. Okay, so that's my why this matters. And by the way, a side note here is that when TVs first came along, it, you know, green was pretty easy. There were a lot of chemistries that were used for this screen. Right? You put a different chemistry here, and it lights up differently when electrons hit it. Why? Wait until Wednesday. Green was easy, yellow was easy, red was hard. Red was hard. They couldn't get a good red. And, um, and of course, uh, and, and, and that's why there were no, that's essentially the reason there were no color TVs until the 60s, right? Um, and the answer, of course, was here. The answer was that there was a phosphor that worked, but it was yttrium orthovanidate with a little bit of europium added to it. Just a little bit of europium. Why did that work? Again, we need to understand how electrons interact with matter, which is where we're going. And speaking of yttrium, speaking of yttrium, this is also a side story, but it's kind of worth noting. You know, elements are named often, well, elements can be named after many things, right? In this case, it was named after Yterbe, Sweden. Yterbe, Sweden is a pretty cool place. They have this one cave. You got to go to it. It's really cool because four elements of the periodic table were all discovered from Yterbe, Sweden in this one cave. Four. And I keep thinking, where is that cave in Cambridge? They, they, can't, they cannot discover any more elements because there's no other way to mess with the name Yterbe. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's a cool cave. That's worth visiting.